now members, let us rise for the anthem. Members, let us take the prayers. On our members, let us pray. Almighty God, we humbly beseech thee to look with favor upon this youth impact parliament. Grant that it may perform its high duty as in thy sight. Give divine guidance to the founder and Speaker of Youth Impact Parliament, and now members of Parliament with discernment and vision, integrity and courage, that through the labors of this Youth Parliament, the interests and wishes of members may be well and truly served, and their good purposes for the common human life be realized in our midst. O oh God, grant us a vision of our country, fair as it might be, a fraternity of righteousness, where none shall wrong his neighbor, a fraternity of plenty, where evil and poverty shall be done away with, a fraternity of brotherhood, where all success shall be founded on service, and honor shall be given to the deserving, a fraternity of peace, where the youth parliament shall rest on the will of its members, and a love for the common good. Bless the efforts of those who struggle to make this vision a living reality, inspire and strengthen our people, that they may give time thought and sacrifice to speed the day of the coming beauty of Youth Impact Parliament, Volta Region, and Ghana. Amen. Honourable members, you may resume your seat. Honourable members, in accordance with parliamentary practice, we have to adopt the other paper for today's sitting. But I believe the other paper is set from discussions in the speaker's lobby. On that note, if, the, if any of the leaders available can move the motion for the adoption of the other paper. Majority leader, kindly move the motion for the adoption of the other paper. Thank you very much. Minority Leader, kindly second the motion. Thank you very much. Honorable Members, motion moved and seconded. I now put the question to the House. All Honorable Members in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Not in favor, say nay. The ayes have it, the motion carries. Therefore, the other paper for today stands as the working document for today's business. <laughs> Honorable members, we will now proceed to item three on the other paper. Before we proceed, um, Reverend Roger Titriku, your seat is in front here. If you can kindly come and sit in front of us with the other. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Honorable members, we we'll move to item three on the other paper which is the welcome address. I now respectfully invite the co-founder, Mr. Elikem Rimon Adbo, to mount the podium and deliver the welcome address for today's sitting. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, all 
distinguished guests invited, majority and minority leader in the August House. Thank you for the opportunity. Mr. Speaker, our special guest of honor, distinguished guests of honor, honorable members, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today, Friday, 22nd April, 2022, to commemorate the first anniversary of Youth Impact Parliament, a youth movement established mainly to build capacity for the youth as future leaders of our dear country, Africa, and the world. Our gathering here today is to commemorate and celebrate the establishment and achievement of Youth Impact Parliament as vehicle for capacity building in democratic governance for the youth in Ghana, Africa, and beyond. I am a person who believes that changing the world does not start in a big way, but in a very small way like what we are witnessing today. Youth Impact Parliament is gradually and consistently establishing itself as a game changer in extending the frontiers of youth empowerment and leadership training. We hope the light emanating from this torch will boost the self-confidence of the youth to assume greater responsibilities in our nation building efforts. This organization does not and will not promote evil, but only seek the good of our dear motherland Ghana. On behalf of the entire leadership of Youth Impact Parliament, I welcome you all to the first anniversary of our movement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and the August House. Thank you very much, our co-founder, for the welcome address. Before we move to the second part of today's program, on the other paper, I'd like to quickly recognize the presence of some special people in our midst. All of us are indeed special. However, at the right time, I would recognize you all. But for now, kindly allow me to recognize the presence of Mr. Faisal Abdul Idrisu, the Speaker of Volta Regional Youth Parliament. Yeah. One of our guests of honors, Mr. Charles Kwesi Gomenu, who is Municipal Director of National Youth Authority. Yeah. One of our guests of honors, Mr. Simon Kojo Mesa Avoga, yeah. the National President of HTU Alumni Association. Yeah. One of our guests of honors, Reverend Roger Elam Chitriku, Deputy General Overseer of Paradise International. Yeah. One of our guests of honors, Honorable George Kofi Nfojo, former MP for Ho Central Constituency. Yeah. And then our special guest of honor, Honorable Etonam James Fululu, DCE for Afaja 2 South. Yeah. Honorable members, we'd like to move on to the second part of the program, which is the commencement of commemorative business. Second Deputy Speaker to take the chair, also I deliver. Item four. Uh, sorry, first deputy speaker. Mr. Speaker, honorable guest of um, honor, distinguished guest of honor seated here. Honorable members, ladies and gentlemen, Youth Impact Parliament is a youth movement based in Ho, Ghana, and founded on the 22nd of April 2021 by Jones Amagashiviglo, a young intellectual political activist who is passionate about parliamentary democracy and African unity. Raymond Elike Magbo and Amano David Na are co-founders. I would like to, before I proceed with um, this, I would like to recognize my co-founders, if they can be upstanding. So we have here 
Amano David Na, he's one of our co-founder. And then Raymond Elikamadbo is also our co-founder, and I'm the founder. The founding of the movement was precipitated by his frustration and the inability of African countries to achieve good governance and prosecute African unity. He is also appalled by the type of leadership that African countries have exhibited over the years in their past colonial administration. And he feels there is a compelling need to inculcate values of patriotism, honesty, transparency, hard work, selflessness, and dedication to duty in the youth as future leaders of their countries for championing collaborative participatory democracy through reflective interrogation of challenges confronting attempts at attaining good governance and African unity. The movement seeks to promote the movement seeks to promote achievement of good governance through building capacity for the youth in parliamentary democracy. YIP seeks to cultivate a new breed of leadership that will put their nation over and above their individual interests and fight for the attainment of good governance and the establishment of a Pan-African unity through country-based African parliamentary movements and networking. Youth Impact Parliament, YIP, will serve as a training ground for character building and training for Ghanaian and African youth in leadership and in their various countries. State of the problem. African youth of today are disappointed with bad governance and frustrated with the poverty of leadership and corruption being exhibited in Africa and most African leaders. Evidence of corruption, mismanagement of resources, abuse of human rights, ethnic cleansing, civil strife, poor health, education facilities, decaying infrastructures, energy crisis, and lack of collective shared vision for their various countries have become a lot of most African governments. Even though individuals, even though individual African leaders, such as Osajefo Dr. Kramin Nkrumah and Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings of Ghana, Nelson Mandela of South Africa, Colonel Mudma Gaddafi of Libya, Paul Kagame of Rwanda and John Magufuli of Tanzania have demonstrated good faith and commitment to good governance and the promotion of African unity. There remains much work to be done and accomplished for African countries to depart from their track record of bad governance. There is a need for us to have a new breed of leadership in Africa. This governance as we are saying, there is a need for us to have a new breed of leadership, and that is what Youth Impact Parliament, Movement seeks to accomplish by making this movement a forum for capacity building for the youth in good governance. Aspects of the capacity building includes character training and integrity, honesty, public policy analysis, provision of relevant education, quality of health care delivery, democratic participation, constitutional studies, public speaking skills, communication skills, equal opportunity and gender studies, social values and norms, and the development of patriotic attitudes. Vision, Youth Impact Parliament movements seeks to become a virtual youth Pan-African Parliament of Excellence in character training for good governance and democratic values for the youth in Africa and in general, most specifically Ghana in particular. Mission, cultivation of a new breed of African young leaders with integrity and incorruptible character for national development and achievement 
of good governance and African unity. Objectives of Youth Impact Parliament. One, to create an enabling environment for the youth to build their character in integrity and selflessness. Two, to create opportunities for the exposure in parliamentary process and procedures for youth democratic leadership. Three, to promote and serve as a training ground for the youth in act of public speaking. Four, to create linkages with parliamentarians and other state officers for expanding the frontiers of parliamentary knowledge, skills, and attitude among African youth. Honourable members, I'm now going to outline the past activities that we have done since establishment. That was exactly one year ago. Since establishment, we have held a number of activities, both physical and virtual sittings. These are the records of sittings held. First pilot sitting was held on Saturday, 8th May, 2021. We had our second pilot sitting on Saturday, 26 June, 2021. Then we had our third pilot sitting on Saturday, 8th August. So we had three pilot sittings and we dissolved the pilot parliament. As a matter of fact, it was called HTU Youth Parliament by then. So on that day, we inaugurated and formed Youth Impact Parliament. It started a long while, but it just had a different name at the starting. So on that same day, we had the first regular sitting. Then we had our second regular sitting on Sunday, 10th October, 2021. Let me just unveil some of the sacrifices our members have done. We started giving out, um, refreshing our members with the regular item 13 from, um, from the second regular sitting. That means from all the first sitting, they are sacrificing even their tummy. God bless you all. So we had our third regular sitting on Monday, 15th of November, 2021. We had our fourth regular sitting on Sunday, 20th February, 2022. That was the first one we had this year. And we had our fifth virtual regular sitting on Tuesday, 22nd March, 2022. We had our last sitting before this one. That was on Sunday, 3rd April, 2022. As we said, Youth Impact Parliament creates capacity building. So one of our medium for capacity building was our virtual leadership seminars. And then you, you demonstrate what you have learned at our sittings. So we had a number of capacity building seminars, which were all virtual. We had our first one with Mr. Eric Adam Adbana on Thursday, 20th of January, 2022. We had our second one with Mr. Michael Elam on Thursday, 10th February, 2022. We had our third one with Mr. Julius Kwame Anthony on Wednesday, 2nd March, 2022. We had our fourth seminar with Honorable Peter Nosukotwe, that's the MP for Akatino, if I'm right, on Thursday, 10th March, 2022. We had our fifth one with Her Excellency Lillian Saliado on Tuesday, 15th March, 2022. We had our sixth virtual leadership seminar with Mr. Faisal Abdul Idrisu on Thursday, 24th March, 2022. We had our seventh virtual leadership seminar with Reverend Roger Elam Tutriku on 1st April, 2022. We had our eighth virtual leadership seminar with Mr. Eric Norma Koranche. That was on Thursday, 7th April, 2022. Then our ninth one with WH Corbina London on Thursday, 14th April. All these virtual leadership seminars that we had were accordingly uploaded on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. So if you are interested, kindly really go and watch them there. Some other unique activities we had was an um, International Women's Day panel discussion on Wednesday, 9th March 2022. Then our second special program, which is today's special anniversary, uh, special sitting held today, Friday, 22nd April, 2022. Yay. So as I said, we make use of virtual um, social media handles to promote our vision. We have a lot of WhatsApp groups. We have two main ones that are open to the public and then some for special businesses. We have a Facebook public page, a private 
public group, private group, and then a normal page. We have an Instagram account at YIP Ghana, a Twitter account at YIP Ghana. We have a Telegram group, and then our YouTube channel. I indulge you all to follow our YouTube channel, and then let's increase the number of subscribers. Recommend us. Youth Impact Foundation. That will be a foundation called Youth Impact Foundation. The foundation will be focused on seeking funds to support the vision and mission of this parliament. The foundation will, as well, freely offer leadership training to SRCs of tertiaries in Ghana and prefectural boards of SS, specifically in the Volta region. The leadership of the foundation will have an executive director, administrative director, and finance director. And then we'll also have patrons and trustees at the appropriate time. Finances. As of now, virtually all costs of operations and programs is borne by John Samagasivglu, the founder. We wish to appeal to all here and listening to us, support us freely from their heart from time to time. Legality. On Tuesday, the 12th of April, 2022, YRP officially registered with National Youth Authority. Can I hear here, here, here to that? Yeah. Efforts are underway to register the movement with the Registrar's Department of the Republic of Ghana. Future plans. The association or the organization will be introducing, actually we have already introduced youth representation, youth constituency representation. That is, we are looking at um, Volta, region, Volta regional constituencies, OT regional constituencies, uh, Eastern region and Greater Accra in the composition of our second parliament. Right now we have the first parliament and it will soon be dissolved and the second one will be formed. So the Google form application will be sent around. And then also general membership, that Google form is also ready and then it will be shared from today for any member, wherever you are, to join us. It has no cost implications in joining us. One of the things we try to do is that we want to reduce cost implications because after all, this, this is a youth organization. It is volunteerism. Why do you have to pay to volunteer? It is due to that that we look for other alternatives to sort out our financial burdens than to impose it on you. For me, I don't have any intentions of imposing dues on anyone. We would fund our operations from donations and then we'll have a headway. Apart from that, we are hoping to acquire ropes for the officers. This rope is not for youth in part parliament. So we are hoping to acquire the speaker's rope, two speakers or my honorable deputy speakers. We have one handsome one seated on my chair, honorable Felix Hakwe, the handsome one. And then his younger brother, um, Emmanuel Hadeke, also seated there. Reserve speaker, thank you so much. So we are quite rose for them as well. My beautiful clerks, I have my clerk there, Hilary Fosuansa. Can we see you? Yes. And then one of her deputy clerks is there. So we want to acquire robes for all of them. There are four in number, the clerk, deputy clerk publicity, deputy clerk operations, and deputy clerk finance. We want to acquire robes for all of them from donations and then whatever money I'm able to gather. We also wish to acquire a backdrop like this. We should have Youth Impact Parliament's logo heavily uh, displayed at the back so that you can see my logo. Our logo, sorry, not my logo. Our logo. Yeah. Yes. So we want to work on that. A tripod stand to, you know, to have, um, to live stream our own settings without calling for, or to outsource that. A maze and a gavel. That gavel is not ours. So we want to acquire our own gavel. Hit it for me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and then a mace to be in front of the decks of the clerk. A branded table cover. We want to have our own uh, table covers to cover our, uh, our tables that will have the logo inscribed on it. And then electronic devices like phones and then laptops to stream our, our and then if possible, a router to stream our settings and then whatever program that we have. Conclusion, right, Honorable Speaker, Youth Impact Parliament 
has come to stay. Let us support this vision of this honorable parliament. Thank you very much. Honourable members, we will now proceed to the next item on our order paper, which is item five, which is statement by the minority leader, the Honourable Erasmus Kofi Ahanu, on the past impact of youth impact parliament. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, in the House. I stand on the existing protocols to deliver the statement. Impact of Youth Impact Parliament on its members. Mr. Speaker, I count myself most opportuned to be a member of Youth Impact Parliament. Ever since its inauguration, Youth Impact Parliament has never ceased to sparkle awe and marvel before our eyes. All honorable members of Youth Impact Parliament, present or absent, can undoubtedly render attestation the Youth Impact Parliament has given us the best grooming in countless ways. Mr. Speaker, Youth Impact Parliament was established to create opportunity for youths to be groomed in leadership roles, public speaking, parliamentary business, social norms, and values in Ghana. With your permission, I seek to abreast this honorable house with the impact of Youth, Parliament, youth Impact Parliament on its members thus far. Mr. Speaker in the House, ever since its establishment, the eloquence of members have seen a rising improvement. Can honorable members say, yeah, yeah? yeah. Mr. Speaker, our members are mounting several platforms, both on media and off media. Since its establishment, Youth Impact Parliament has never ceased to widen the spotlight it has shown on members. With the inauguration of countless virtual seminars, Honorable members have been privileged to have the likes of Honorable Edem Agbana and other prominent members or people in the society to tune our rationale, to tune our rationale and scope of thought toward eloquence and positive attitudes towards work, toward governance, constitutional knowledge, statecraft, volunteerism, proficiency, eloquence, and positive attitudes towards work. Mr. Speaker, the magnanimity of Youth Impact Parliament can also be assessed with the aspiration of members for SLC leadership portfolios. Mr. Speaker, I would like to put it on record that Youth Impact Parliament has produced the current HTU SLC Speaker, President, in the person of Mr. Samuel Kisi Ampedu. Can we have a yeah, yeah? Indeed. Mr. Speaker, HTU SLC Vice President was also produced from Youth Impact Parliament. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, he's in the person of Mr. Selom Bright Vixen. Mr. Speaker, we also have HTU SLC speakers in the person of Mr. Felix Huape Adiche. Yeah, yeah. Please, we want to acknowledge our, our members so we can give a yeah, yeah to each member. Mr. Speaker, we also have Mr. Amano David Na, yeah. Mr. Emmanuel Odoi, yeah. SLC Chief Justice, Mr. Wanda Jamesi, yeah. HTU SLC PRO, Mr. Dola Gladstone, yeah. HTU SLC Finance Officer, Mr. Hubert Agbahode, yeah. U House SLC President Elect, Mr. Sunny Days. You have SLC Speaker of Parliament, Miss Priscilla Efriye Adai. NASPA Vice President, myself, in the person of Mr. Erasmus Ahianu Kofi. Yeah. Please, my own is too small. Yeah. NASPA Finance Secretary, Mr. Ali Gabas Osman. Yeah. NASPA Wukom, Miss Onais Adams and many more I cannot mention due to time. Mr. Speaker, there are several names and platforms that time won't permit unveiling. However, with the aforementioned, there is no denial 
the Youth Impact Parliament is on the verge of producing leaders who will manage the affairs of our economy in the, new, in the near future. Mr. Speaker, with this said, I thank you. Honorable members, thank you very much. Thank you very much, our Honorable Minority Leader. We'll now proceed to item six on the other paper. Statement by the Majority Leader, Honorable Amano Davidna, on the expected future impact of this house. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker, and then your guest house. Mr. Speaker, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, kindly permit me to stand on the already existing protocols to address this August gathering. I'm most grateful for the opportunity given me to make this statement on the floor of Parliament on the first anniversary special sitting. Mr. Speaker, looking at where youth in par Parliament started from and where we have reached within one year, it is clear to me that Youth Impact Parliament has a lot of potentials for the future. From your report to the House, just within one year, Youth Impact Parliament has held nine parliamentary seatings and has also held nine virtual leadership cinema. All these were done with limited resources available to Youth Impact Parliament. Mr. Speaker, just imagine what will happen if Youth Impact Parliament gets adequate resources for the implementation of its plans and activities. Just within one year, Mr. Speaker, Youth Impact Parliament has hosted a member of Ghana's Parliament, Honorable Peter Nochu Kote, and an international figure with the United Nations in Accra, a vibrant and articulate youth and a whole lot of resource persons. Mr. Speaker, I will not be surprised if I hear that Youth Impact Parliament is hosting the Speaker of Ghana's Parliament. Can I hear a yeah, yeah for that? Yeah. The President of the Republic of Ghana. Yeah. Former Presidents. Yeah. Former Speakers of Ghana's Parliament. Yeah. And even Supreme Court Justices of Ghana. Yeah. We have plans to invite international figures such as Professor PLO Lumumba of Kenya yeah. and Honorable Julius Malema of South Africa in the future. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, Youth Impact Parliament has potentials for the future and I wish to add the youth and early to participate in this initiative. I'm happy to see one of the youngest district chief executive in Ghana present here in the person of Honorable James Etonam Flolu, can I get a year for him? Yeah. Who was appointed district chief executive at the tender age of 29 years old. Mr. Speaker, his appointment gives us hope to the youth, and this explains why Union Park Parliament has decided to make him the special guest of honor for its first anniversary. Yeah. We are also doubly excited to have a former member of parliament for whole central, Honorable Captain George Ifojo. Yeah. He was part of the PNDC under the President of the Republic of Ghana, Flight Lieutenant John Joy Rawlings of blessed memory. Honorable Captain, your presence has emanated our hopes and our aspirations for the future. We are also happy to see one of the youngest clergymen in our midst in the presence of Reverend Roger Tudiku, who is the Deputy General Basia of Paradise International Ministries. Yeah. Reverend Roger Tudiku, we are proud of your achievement as a youth. It is most gratifying to see our old intellectual godfather, our academic mentor, and a role model in the person of Mr. Simon Abogan with us here. As we call him, Father Abraham, we, we, we are privileged to see you in our midst. Finally, it is refreshing to see the affable presence of the National Youth Authority Director for Home Municipal Among Us. Yeah. The presence of the Director of the Youth, the National Youth Authority, gives us the legal backing and the recognition for our movement. 
so that in the future nobody will tell us that we are an illegal entity. Can I hear a hear for that? Yeah. We are particularly grateful to you, Director, for your endorsement. Mr. Speaker, I know and believe that Youth Impact Parliament will become a formidable youth movement for the achievement of national development and aspirations in the future. It is our expectation to start receiving official invitation for representation on statutory bodies of state agencies. I thought we'd say a year here for the building to collapse. Yeah. National television programs and radio stations. It is, to, it is to note that every big institution starts small. The same way Samsung started small, the same way Amazon started in someone's backyard, same way Youth Impact Parliament has started small, and in the future it shall be great. Yeah. Our dreams will not die, and it will surely become a reality. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I hereby indulge all guests and participants and anyone watching us to support this vision. Youth Impact Parliament is the future and will produce responsible leaders for Ghana in the future. I thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, our Majority Leader, for your statement. Honourable members, as you can see, the high table is briefly decorated. I believe I do not need to specify what equipment, gadgets, and all those that are used to decorate it. Honourable members, at this juncture, we are now at item 7, the cutting of the anniversary cake and popping of champagnes. I will now respectfully invite our special guest of honour, and our guest of honors to join me cut the anniversary cake. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for a year's journey. Thank you that what began in a small way you have sustained for many months and many weeks. We declare by the cutting of this cake that the roots of this organization is much more established. By the drinking of wine, we solidify and seal the fellowship and the virtues and values that this organization will stand for. We pray that the Holy Spirit will back us even as we do this. In the name of God the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So if you can all now cut the key. Okay, majority, minority, please come and join us. Whilst we commemorate the event in the casting of cake. Flashlight. Yes, I can't do this alone. Yes, yes I can't do this. Yes, okay. You must so, stand strategically. Strategically, so that, uh, yes. So, yeah, just like right camera. camera. Uh, yeah. Is this a picture of what? Pointed. Yeah. Oh, okay. And they are witnesses. So, I'm yeah. Also, so. yeah. We have to cut it at a different size. Triangle, exactly. So now, position two. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah.
addition to the commemoration, we'll have our honorable majority and minority leaders pop their champagne for us. <laughs> Which caucus is winning? Majority or minority? <laughs> Deputy speakers, you want to help them? so much. So as they share the drink, uh, okay, so please let's repeat the song again. DJ. members, it is now time to um, hold the toast. Is it prefer the toast or hot? Prepare the toast. Propose the toast, exactly. And I would like my honorable co-founder to do that for us. Honorable Elikem, the floor is yours. Thank you, right honorable speaker and the August House. Please, are we all served with the champagne? Okay. Let's all get served so that we proceed. Okay, please, are we all set now? Okay, shall we all raise the, um, yes, our glasses? Okay, those of you who don't have the glass, you can just raise your imaginary glasses. Those of you who don't have the champagne yet, raise your imaginary champagne, okay? So you go after me. Thank you, DJ. Thank you, DJ. Thank you, DJ. Okay, we propose this toast. Can you please repeat after me? We propose this toast to Youth Impact Parliament for more success, for more victories, for more impact, and for us to be heard all over the world. Cheers. Thank you, DJ. Over to you.
honorable members, it appears the festivities is indeed going on well. YIP will go far. Honorable members, we would like to continue today's program. Moving on to the third part of today's program, on the other paper, commencement of commemorative speeches and remarks. Honorable members, we will now move to item, item 8 on the other paper, which is having a remark by Mr. Charles K. Gumenu. But before he approaches the podium, I would like to humbly read out a short profile about him before he takes the podium and then give his remark on our anniversary. Honorable members, Mr. Charles Kwesi Gomenu is a professional youth development officer. He has diploma in Commonwealth Youth Development Program from the University of Ghana. He holds Bachelor of Arts in Social Behavior and Conflict Management from the University of Cape Coast. He is a final year Master's of Arts in Sociology of Peace and Security student at the University of Cape Coast. He has spent 11 years working in the youth sector and has participated in youth development work in both national and international space. He is currently the Municipal Director of National Youth Authority for Home Municipality. Honorable members, I respectfully invite our guest of honor, Mr. Charles Kwesi Gomenu, the Home Municipal Youth Director, Youth, um, National Youth Authority Director, to approach the podium and give us his remarks on our anniversary. Honorable Speaker, uh, Honorable Invited Guests, Honorable Members, Ladies and Gentlemen, Good Afternoon. I'm so refreshed to be part of this uh, August House. Uh, youth Parliament concept is something designed by the National Youth Authority. It's very unfortunate. Most of the young people of Ghana today does not know much about National Youth Authority. One professor at the University of Ghana uh, made a research for the year 2019-2020 and he plotted a linear graph about how or uh, comparing National Youth Authority and National Youth Employment Agency. And when you look at the graph, National Youth Employment Agency is always at the top, meaning it's well known by the public than the National Youth Authority. National Youth Authority is the only government agency established in the year 1974 by an Act of Parliament, formerly known as National Youth Council. Then the name keep on changing, and now we are National Youth Authority. Our core mandate is to facilitate the development of the youth. That is the holistic development of the youth. And per the law or the policy, people with the age bracket of 15 to 35 years are the youth of Ghana. You may be confused when United Nations is defining youth. For you and the youth are those from 15 to 24 years. But according to the African Charter, the youth 
are those within 15 to 35 years, and Ghana being part of the African Charter, we are also going by that. Now, when we look at the, the current or the recent population and housing sense of Ghana Statistical Service, the youth form majority of the population. At least, those below 25 of Ghana's population, they are about 57% of the total population, meaning majority are hot youth. Now, we all know, before then, let me quote one of our illustrious sons of Ghana. He says, and I quote, any society that does not succeed in tapping into the energy and activity of its use will be left behind. That's our own Kofi Annan. And we all know that the youth are the backbone of every given society. I said it's refreshing to be here because I barely know of Youth Impact Parliament less than a month ago. And when uh, Honorable Speaker approached me, I questioned him and I educated him on what we do and the right thing must be done. He didn't waste much time. He approached my office and picked a registration form and I will tell you here that the Youth Impact Parliament is duly reg registered with National Youth Authority. Yeah. What is the essence of registering with National Youth Authority? We don't work in isolation. We work with other government agencies and international organizations because we have to develop the youth holistically. You know, National Youth Employment is only taking the employment aspect of the young person. National Youth Authority is taking up the holistic development of the youth. Your mindset, your education, activity, skills, and even creating an enabling environment for you to thrive in every any, uh, uh, life endeavor. So we have started working barely some few weeks ago, but I'm impressed of what I've seen here today. Uh, the only observation that I'm not happy with is the honorable members who are female are uh, relatively small or low. I hope we can work on that. Yeah, because the world is changing. Even if you go according to the statistics of the, the recent uh, population and housing census, the female population is 50.7% of the total population, meaning the male is what, 49.3. So the female are more than the male. So we should encourage our female counterpart to be up and doing. Sometimes not our fault. They, they, they lie withdrawing from a lot of activities. And they are, they are their own enemy from my personal experience, if you want to project a, a woman, the fellow woman will be trying to hurt, pull her down. Even if you, you, you will be amazed to hear that per the current uh, population census, Volta region has the, the highest, among all the 60 regions, we have the highest women, uh, hurt, female population. That we are the first region among the 16 has the, the, the female population at within the number of a uh, male population. So let us all endeavor to support and give our female the needed opportunity. Uh, now, I would like to school all of us for just about 10 minutes through the concept of the youth parliament. We have a manual that guides the 
youth parliament. And uh, I will make it available to the honorable speaker and uh, the leadership. Because uh, I can see that even your sitting arrangement, we are lucky to have the regional uh, speaker of uh, Water Regional Youth Parliament here. The city arrangement, something must be done about it. There's a diagram attached to the manual that I will be giving out to the leadership so that uh, you work on it. Uh, because I can see that you are into a serious business here. For that one, I'm... I'm, I'm yeah. So, per the National Youth Act, at 2016... Uh, 2016 at 939, you can all use your phone, Google on the net and read. You are supposed to register all activities of the youth with the National Youth Authority. The registration is in two categories. It, it can be a youth-led activity or a youth-focused activity. Meaning, when we say it's a youth-led activity, it means the youth on their own are organizing their own activity. So it's youth-led. Then maybe you can, your group cannot, may not be uh, young people, and adults of 100 years and over can decide to assist in development of the potentials in the young people. That one we, we, we term it as youth focus organization you are supposed to register your activities with national youth authority if you fail to do that you have the law backing us you can be prosecuted now when you register with us to your data is in our database all information is about you and your activities so organizations like the international bodies plan international ghana action aid UNDP, UNPA, and others will come. We want to work, we want you to identify to us a youth organization or a group that is into social and so activity. I believe some of you here may be members of the Activista Ghana. Is there anybody here who is a member of Activista Ghana? No. Okay. We have a group like that established by Ashi Aid Ghana in whole here and this is to advocate on social challenges maybe gender issues uh, teenage pregnancy and other health challenging issues so honorable members i'll use this opportunity to inform you or get you informed that even in your schools your churches your uh, immediate surrounding or your localities, you can form groups and register it with National Youth Authority. Those in churches, we term them as uh, faith-based organizations. We work with you. There are a lot of opportunities, as I've already said. Uh, I enjoyed uh, an international organization called IYF, International Youth Fellowship, funded by Good News Mission. Whole Municipal Assembly for some, since 2011, has been sponsoring uh, myself and some other young people to their conferences and workshops. Some, they say, mind training. There are a lot of things that you need to know as a young person. For instance, most of us are graduates, others are undergraduates. I, maybe I've done marketing, first degree in marketing or HND, you also done it. An international organization or multimedia or multinational organization has come to engage or hire our services. Then three of us, we are going for an interview. I don't have driving lenses. I don't have passport. Maybe majority leader has a driving lenses and a passport. Then, Honorable has a driving license and a passport and can speak any other international language in addition to the English. Who do you think they will hire? Yes, because they will not employ him 
and go and hire a driver for him to move around. You understand? So instead of uh, maybe employing me without license, without a passport, I cannot travel out of Ghana. They will not employ me. They will not employ. Though we all have the same education hall qualification. These are some of the things that they teach the young people. I'm just trying to give an example. Uh, now, the, let's talk about the organization and coordinating of the youth parliament. NYA, that's National Youth Authority, shall lead the formation and coordination of youth parliament in SHS, through technical institutions and tertiary institutions with the help of Ghana Education Service, head of tertiary institutions, the SRCs, MMDAs, Regional Coordinating Council, Parliament of Ghana, House of Chiefs, and other relevant bodies. So, Honorable Speaker was part of the inauguration of the just uh, recent uh, Regional Youth Parliament. You, uh, you saw the organization and the inauguration and swearing in. It's a serious business. We have done that of the whole municipal uh, last two years, and we are reorganizing it. So currently, two of your reps are members of the whole municipal youth parliament. Yeah. At the swearing uh, ceremony, a, 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 a magistrate court judge has to come in and swear in the speaker who intends to swear the members. So you can see that uh, uh, it's a serious business. Uh -huh. You see, these things are done to give the young people the opportunity to be part of decision makers. When we are addressing you, honorable member, honorable member, it's not just any name. The moment you have become an honorable member of any of the youth parliaments, you have to carry yourself well, the way you behave in the society, your influence in your media surrounding in the society must be felt in a positive word, manner. From the district, municipal, and metropolitan youth parliament, we have regional parliaments. Members of the various municipal and district uh, parliaments are selected to form the regional parliament then the law allows us to look around for instance we have your parliament youth impact parliament in whole so even forming the municipal or the regional youth parliament we have to pick or uh, you are a constituency that need to be represented in the parliament so for now you have two members in the whole municipal youth parliament in the near future some of your members will be part of the regional youth parliament Then, when we are going in for the National Youth Parliament, the region must send the uh, reps because the voter region has become a constituency in the National Youth Parliament. And it, you will be surprised to hear that the National Youth Parliament is supposed to sit twice in the year, and they can sit in the National chamber, the parliament, uh, parliamentary chamber of Ghana. So it's stated here clearly that during the recess of the national parliament, the, nas uh, the national parliament of Ghana, the national youth parliament can sit using the heart, the chamber of the uh, national uh, parliamentary uh, chamber. So, and the National Youth Parliament will sit twice in a year. The Regional Youth Parliament have to sit four times in a year. Then the Municipal District and Metropolitan Youth Parliament are supposed to sit eight times in a year. Other Youth Parliament, such as those in the tertiary institutions, the Senior uh, High and others, can also sit eight times in the year, depending on the academic calendar. So, honorable members, uh, I will indulge all of us.
to devote our time once we have become members of the Youth Impact Parliament, it will help all of us. We are supposed to look around who and its environs, identify social challenges, debate on it. We can prefer solutions that we can approach duty bearers. When I say duty bearers, example is the municipal chief executive, the environmental health officer, the uh, municipal health director, the social service, uh, the social uh, welfare director. That maybe this is what the youth impact parliament has identified if it's about the rise in teenage pregnancy in the whole municipality or it's an environmental issue. You debate, come out with good solutions, approach the officer in charge that this is what we have observed and this is what we think we can do to help the municipality move forward. I hope I'm making some sense. You know, last two years, the Western Regional Youth Parliament summons one of the mining companies to their city to come and answer some questions, which is wrong. The youth parliaments are legal entities or well uh, recognized by government, but you don't have that power to take such steps. If you see any social challenge, social issue that you want to address, please approach the duty bearers. I hope I'm clear. Okay. And these sort of things will give you the opportunity to meet different people, you network, and you become our future leaders. Our youth are going waste. My office is not far from the prison. You always see our young people, sometimes three, four, they handcuff them, sending them to the prison. I ask myself, am I doing my job properly? Do I even know the youth population in the whole central prison? What programs am I designing to help the youth in the prisons to acquire some skills? In Ghana now, we are not reforming our, ex our convicts. Our ex-convicts are becoming more criminal. So my brothers and sisters, our honorable members of the August House, Let's, let us take it upon ourselves as honorable members. Let our influence bring change to our immediate environment and the society. Honorable Speaker, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, the NYA Municipal Director who is in the person of Mr. Charles Kwesi Gomenu. Thank you very much for your commemorative remarks. Honorable members, on the other paper, we we'll proceed to item nine on the other paper. Remarks by Mr. Simon K.M. Avoga. Before I invite him to mount the podium, I'd like to quickly read a short or brief profile about him. Mr. Simon Kojo Okwajo Mesa Avoga, as a lecturer at the Department of Marketing of Whole Technical University, and he is also acting as the head of department. Mr. Voga is the national president of Whole Technical University Alumni Association. He holds an HND in marketing from Whole Polytechnic, Bachelor of Marketing from Gimpa. He also holds Masters in Business Administration, that is MBA, and also Masters of Philosophy and Business Consulting and Enterprise Risk Management from KNUST, Kumansi. Mr. Voga is equally a PhD candidate. Honorable members, I respectfully invite our guest of honor, Mr. Simon Kojo Mesa Voga, the National President of HTU Alumni Association, to mount the podium and speak to us.
Thank you, Honorable Speaker and your deputies. Honorable MC, is it not you are DC? Oh, okay, Flolu, your your dad is my cancer chair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Your, the dad is uh, the council chair of Old Technical University Governing Council, of which I'm a member. Honorable, all due respect. Um, my body body, Captain, Honorable Captain Infojo, uh, when you were giving the description of him, I felt that you, you left out so many things. Yes, you just recognize him as the former uh, MP for Ho. Uh, this man has done so much. The name Captain should even tell you that he is an ex soldier and at that level of a captain. And if you want to know much, go back to ask and sit at his feet to tell you about how Ghana's revolution came about. <laughs> He was in the thick of affairs, so don't take him for a joke. He was one time the DCE of Ho Municipal Assembly. And during his time, what I'm coming to talk about is what he implemented. He ensured that there was discipline in this district. People did not like it at the time. But when he was no more, now people were saying, we want Captain Infojo back. <laughs> and some of us think that um, some of these people should be kept in that position to change the situation in certain communities before they are allowed to go. If uh, you mention the Rwandan president who instilled discipline in Rwanda, and Rwanda is now one of the fastest growing countries in the world and one of the neatest countries in Africa then such people should be given that honor. Before he going in for the member of parliament for whole central. So he's gone through. He's somebody with so much experience. Honorable, due respect to you. <laughs> Wonderful. We thank you so much. <laughs> All right. And then Mr. Gumenu, very brilliant uh, presentation. I want to dwell a bit on uh, norms, social norms among the youth. How the norms among the youth, when we concentrate on them, we can become leaders. I want to say this and record. And Prof, due respect, sir. <laughs> you can do all that you want to do. You can form all the organization that you want to form. You can shout at the top of your voice. If you don't have norms and value, this youth parliament is just one of those things that you do. It's ceremonial. And that is what we don't like as normal human beings. An ideal human being does not like norms and values because they, they confine you to, do, to, to certain space that you cannot have your freedom and you're right. When the discussion started before we started the session, people were talking about uh, parent beating and all of those things. And I was saying that why should another parent go and beat another person's child? If that parent disciplines the child. I was growing, my grandfather disciplines us, and you not go out to do anything for another parent to beat you. So you cannot leave your home and go and do something bad. Before you reach home, your grandfather has heard about it. And those days, it was our grandparents who were training us. Yesterday, we were having a debate, and I asked my students, have you stayed with your grandfather before? If you, you are living in your grandfather's house, you wake up, you don't wake up at 7. Some of you sleep and wake up at 9, 10. Students who are studying, with my grandfather, you wake up at four. 
you get to the kitchen you sweep there you fetch water fill the pot Plain. what do we have what is guiding us in africa we talk a lot and all the talks we are talking does not bring anything unproductive talking that's why uh, for some of us permit me if i say this and you don't agree with me some of us think that yes uh, people like lumumba and the rest they talk brilliant talking but what change has he brought he talked and talked and talked and when he went for parliamentary election you lost the talking does not bring that i feel that we can convert and change our talking into energies that will bring out something if i can gather 10 young people and say that we want, we don't want to talk we want to get to the gardens we want to get into the bush and start farming if you're in the farm would you talk would you insult somebody by by two three years we have productivity and then we think especially those of you in the technical university we, we think about converting those raw materials into process things i saw honorable flulu's brilliant um adverts on his area tourism promoting tourism do you know something we had gone there with my students before we spotted some few places our students uh, marketing students do some kind of practical advertising but because of the uh, covid we stopped then we i saw uh, honorable Flulu's uh, advert and i said wow there are a lot of district assemblies and the municipal assemblies who are saying that they cannot do anything they will only have to depend on government salvation to survive tourism is fetching so much for countries like south africa and i'm believing that one day uh, uh, honorable flulu will, will create other jobs and employ more young people for the tourism sector in that area what can we do we are talking too much two we blame everybody and everything except ourselves for years africans have blamed colonialism i've been having an argument with my uh, past students uh, this thing and some to, to the extent that somebody is saying that the whites came to wipe our brains oh you can't think again you can't be innovative and creative again you mean your grandfathers were taken and they took their brains and everything so you also don't have brains you don't have creativity you don't have skills yes they took us out they took our grandfathers away but you that is left here develop your brain and use your brain what they took our grandfathers to go and do there we can also do it here so let's stop blaming and blaming and blaming for so many years Africa have blamed everybody except for the, itself. We need to take the step and move away from blame to developing. And the situation is that we see ourselves failing from one point, one failure to the next failure. Consistently, we are failing. So if you are uh, youth parliament, you are talking about moving away from that place and evolving new leaders we want to see leaders who recognize that we have failed and therefore we must work towards becoming successful if you go back to follow the same thing that your forebears were having then you continue in the failure and you hand over to another generation to continue in the failure and will continue to be so and if you continue to be in failure those people we are calling the white and the domi dominating us will continue to dominate us it is time for us to point at a solution we must work towards solving problems than complaining about problem and we must always propose solutions that are tested if not so you start and you fail because it is not tested you have not used all the factors and the conditions to test the solutions so it will fail on the way somewhere so we must test our proposed solutions 
The fifth point I want to raise here is that the problem of Africa is, is because we have an unstructured way of life. Our big men here will tell you, you go to England, you are waiting for a bus. The bus will arrive at 10. If you reach there at one minute after 10, the bus is gone. We organize programs. We are starting. They didn't say you must arrive at 4. They say arrive, the, the program starts at 4. Now we start coming in at 4.30. The 30 minutes is productive. And if we want to calculate it, the trillions of dollars that we have lost because of lateness, we cannot account for it. So they have structured systems. They have orders. They have things that you must follow so that you don't become wasteful. For instance, a young person, you drink a bottle of water and then throw it anywhere. Over there, if you, if you drop it, Singapore, if you spit, if you spit, you'll be charged. If you chew gum and then you put gum under, uh, you'll be charged. <laughs> But that is what we, we, we like doing. And it has become part and parcel of us. For you, the youth parliament, in part parliament, I want to urge you to look at some of these things if we really want to develop leaders that will bring solutions to Africans' problem. Also, um, the prob another problem we have is that we are too familiar with ourselves and very sympathetic with ourselves. Sometimes when I'm driving, you get to a junction where a vehicle is coming from another direction which has the right of way. And because the, the person knows me, he will stop there, pam, 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 telling me to come and pass. He, he's doing me good. However, where you park is a dangerous thing. If another car misses his brakes, he will kill all of us. It is your right of way. Go and let another person pass. But we are just so, too sympathetic. We want to show favor to the people we know. We want to, and so we are breaking the rules and breaking the laws. We need to deal with this aspect of our life. Obama said we should establish and strengthen our institutions so that they must work. Our institutions, they must work. We lose trillions of dollars because we have not institute, instituted norms and values. The, just recently, we heard about parliamentarians who have missed parliament for the stipulated time that they shouldn't go to parliament. Eh, that they, they didn't go to parliament. Until people started agitating for that. It is then that uh, we are now like bringing those things to bear. And uh, we, we will all hear it. It will not wash because we don't have norms and values. In certain jurisdictions, when you yourself know that in 15 days you have not, you have not gone to parliament, what would you do? It, you, you know that the system will just throw you out. But here, yeah, we take everything from gra uh, for granted. So... It, it makes us lose billions or trillions of dollars that will help us develop our, um, our country as a nation. Then the last thing I want to emphasize on is that the youth, what we call social norms and social values, you say they are ancient and they are outmoded. Norms and values never get outmoded. They are the core uh, lifeline of discipline. They are the things that makes us to be conscious of whatever we are doing. They are the things that guides us to be productive. They are the things that makes us efficient and effective. Those countries that we always yearn to go to is simply because of efficiency and effectiveness 
And what makes them do so? Because they have norms and their values. You think the whites are just there like that? I, I one day asked a question because I saw white ladies wearing pants and then roaming about. And I asked, what is this? And they said, over there, that is how they have grown. That is their norm. You can see the person. Even if you do, it's an, it's, it's an abuse. The person can take you to court that you have emotionally abused the person. And so, that is your norm. So what is our norm? What is our values? What do we respect? But the youth will say that, oh, it is ancient. It is archaic. It is, uh, we are talking about modern day things and then you are, uh, no. Do we understand what is in, is in there? Some of us go to church. The church thing, the, the whole thing about church is about norms and values. This issue of righteousness is about norms and values. Do the right things and get the right things done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Simon Avoga, for your commemorative remark on our anniversary. On our members, would proceed to the next item on the other paper, item 10. Remarks by Reverend Roger Elam Tutriku. On our members, before he mounts the podium, I would briefly read his profile, and then he would give us his remark. Reverend Roger Elam Tutriku is the resident pastor of whole Central Assembly of Paradise International. Here, let me just say that he has given us this auditorium to use for our sitting. We normally meet at the JCR, of which we have the opposing bench parliamentary sitting arrangement. But today we are using here because the JCR has been used. So he has given us this place for our anniversary. Yay. In recognition of his, um, of his deserity, tenacity, and commitment to his calling, the General Council of Elders, on the recommendation of the steering committee, appointed him as the Deputy General of ASEA of the Church in August 2019. Reverend Chitriku served as the youth pastor of Paradise International at, um, from 2012. He is humorous, dynamic, compelling, and charismatic in his style of preaching and communicating the word of God. He extends his reach to both the young and the old. Reverend Chitriku read BSc in chemistry. He is a trained biochemist. He is a trained biochemical scientist. That means he's adding the chemistry to the word of God as well. Let's give him a hear here for that. Yeah. He holds a postgraduate certificate or postgraduate certificates in project management, record management, and archive administration for electronic and paper management. Honorable members, I respectfully invite our guest of honor, Reverend Roger Elam Chichiku, the, the Deputy General of ASEA of Paradise International, to give us his remarks on our anniversary. Thank you very much. I think you omitted the University of Ghana. We don't joke with the University of Ghana, Mr. Speaker. So the BSc was from University of Ghana. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, kindly permit me to stand on the existing protocols that were established earlier. Uh, I want to bring you fraternal greetings from the church. We celebrate YIP on their one-year journey. And kudos to the things you've done and then the things we are seeing today. God give you grace for the things that are ahead. I am not a keynote speaker, so briefly, I think coincidentally he spoke on values. I was about speaking on discipline because the young people, are th I think, are missing out on a lot of things. Youth have power. 
in Ghana, there was a time, I think in 79, Captain is here. Captain is a good friend of my dad. And when my dad left, I started worrying him small, small when we met at places. And he can attest that I think it was in 79 that young people started marching from the University of Ghana saying, let the blood flow. But because it was the voice of young people, people were just following. The young people have power. From the address given by the director at the Youth Authority, National Youth Authority, he gave the statistics as 57% of the current population are young people. The youth have power in their numbers. That is why we cannot relent. The politicians need us because they know we have the power, because we have the numbers. The pastors need us. The chiefs need us. Everyone needs us because we have the power in our numbers. Another thing that we have power in is our energy. People may not be able to stand for long. I'm not sure, Honorable Flolu and the father, if we ask the two of them to stand when prof is standing and his son is standing i'm sure one will sit before the other because one has energy than the father doesn't and so youth have energy which is also an added strength for them but how can we divert this power into productive use you talked about acquisition of skills anytime we gather like this skills are very important and anytime you mention skills we are never born with skills. Skills are acquired, and so we have to acquire it. And I think your platform is a good place for young people to acquire skills, because when people were reading their speeches, you could see that we are developing good communicators, good orators, which is important, because communication skills, we are not born with them. We acquire it. And that is what the young people have not learned to do to acquire skills as they are growing and also to instill values as Mr. Avonu, of Mr. Vaughan, great, Mr. Vaughan said, values are instilled, skills are acquired. I'm a clergyman, so permit me to read from Lamentations chapter number three, the verse 27, and I read from the message translation. He said, it is a good thing for a young man to stick through hard times. Other translations say that it is a good thing that a young man bears the yoke early. What is a yoke? A yoke is a wooden platform that is put on the back or the neck of animals to get them to work. And the Bible here is saying that it is good that a young man takes up his yoke early. Youth, plat, youth in, uh, Impact plat, uh, Parliament is a platform for young people, and I think that is a point that we need to give them the platform to develop characters early, skills early, and instill values in people very, very early. The Bible says that it is expedient for a young man to carry the yoke of his life early so there is a yoke of life that must be carried very early starting very early gives power starting very early shapes us and by the time we get there we will not make mistakes i think most people who are in authority today if they have started some things very early the mistakes we are seeing now we might not be even hearing of it because there were things they did not follow early. Mr. Avogan spoke, I'm, I'm, I'm referencing him because virtually he spoke on the same thing that I wanted to speak on and summarizing everything. He spoke on the fact that there are things that we need to follow. We don't have things we follow. If there, were, if there is a word discipline, then there is also disciple. Disciple is a follower. We must have things that we follow. Bear the yoke. The yoke doesn't bring comfort. Young people want comfort at a tender age. But if you have comfort at a tender age, when you retire, what would you be looking for? You are actually being retired from service to rest. But we want that comfort at, uh, at the stage that we need to carry the yoke of discipline. Discipline and manage our times discipline and manage our attitudes, discipline and manage our values. Follow a pattern that this is a no-no for me. This is a yeah, yeah for me. This thing I will not stand for. I have decided to follow this pattern until it becomes part of me. To bear the yoke 
at a, an early stage. And for all of us sitting here, as we commemorate this very beautiful anniversary, I just want to remind you that the Bible expects us that we carry a certain yoke. There is no yoke that, is, that brings comfort. When two asses, as the Bible calls them, two donkeys, have a yoke on their neck, they don't have the comfort, they don't have the luxury to play and run around. They, are, they may want to run, but they are guided by the yoke that is on their neck. They may want to go another way, but they are guided by the yoke that is on their neck. There are a lot of things that young people would want to do. There are a lot of things that young people want to jump into and follow. But let's be guided with the yoke of discipline. Let's have limits and boundaries for our lives. Let's decide to be followers because it is all a genuine follower who becomes a genuine disciple and it is only a genuine disciple that has things he follows to become disciplined. May we be disciplined as we build Mother Ghana. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, our guest of honor, in the person of Reverend Roger Elam Tutriku. He is my spiritual father as well. Um, just to say, I kind of picked some of my public speaking from him. He knows, but I'm telling the whole world today. So the man you just heard speaking, you can see some resemblance. I leave that quiz to you. <laughs> Honor members, we will now proceed to item 11 on the other paper. Remarks by Honorable George Kofi Mfojo. Before I invite him to mount the podium, kindly permit me to read a brief profile about him. Honorable George Kofi Nfojo is a Ghanaian politician who served as a member of parliament in the fourth and fifth parliaments of the Fourth Republic of Ghana. He represented the whole central constituency on behalf of the National Democratic Congress. He was born on the 21st September 1946. He hails from Sokode Bagbele, a town in the Volta region of Ghana. He obtained his postgraduate diploma in communication studies from the University of Ghana in 1986. I'm very sure some of you were not born by then, and myself. And certificate in public relations from the university uh, from Frank Jefkin School of Public Relations in London. He's a journalist and an advertiser he worked with AGC Limited in Obuasi from 1987 to 1997. He was the district chief executive of whole district from 1997 to 2001. He's a retired captain who worked with the public relations department of the Ghana Armed Forces. And he was also the press liaison officer, press secretary of the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council. AFRC, and also the Provisional National Defense Council, PNDC governments, in 1979 and 31st December 1981, respectively. Honorable members, I now invite to the podium our guest of honor, Honorable George Kofi Nfoju, former MP for Ho Central. Thank you. Thank you very much. I pray you arrange another time for me to meet you as young people so I can put some fire through you. Yeah. Because as young people, the future is yours. And you can become anything you want to be. Nobody is born at this, and so it goes that way. You can be anything, you, but you can become what you want to be. You can start as a liberal, but you can become the biggest millionaire in town. It depends on your determination, your honesty, and boldness. I came to Ho um, in 1997 uh, when a lady, a woman, came to plead that I should leave my work in the gold mine in Obasi and come here as a district chief executive. 
I looked at her, a relative, I looked at her, leave my job here in the gold mine as public relations, senior public relations manager, and come to Ho as DCE. Well, when I asked my family, they said, Daddy, you've done a lot. If your hometown people want you back, why don't you go? Just make sure they give you a bungalow with a big lawn. Because you know, Wasi in the gold mine were enjoying a very big lawn. So I had to come. Before then, I had served in the army. And before the army, I was a journalist. In fact, I graduated as a, a journalist 50 years ago from the Ghana Institute of Journalism. Yes, yeah, so the other time I was passing, I said, hey, I remember, I was here 50 years ago. So I went, to, I went there and have a, had a, uh, a bottle of uh, what? A bottle of what? No, I'm not so spoiled. <laughs> a bottle of Fanta. Yes, if I drink, there'll be trouble, so I don't drink. <laughs> yes, um, I was born here in Bankwe. So when the Bankwe people hear you say, I'm from Sokode, they'll fight you. My father is from Sokode. My mother is from Bankwe, but I was born and bred here. Uh -huh. So I was like any of you, born here, you know. Anytime I was coming to this part of town, I was warned not to come to Dome. Don't go to Dome. You know. So I grew up here and went out, sought my education, and finally came back here. So me, when I came to Ho, it was like a dream fulfilled. I was telling you the other day that even this building, I had a word. Yes, when they were building it. You remember? I said, no. Until certain things were done, I wouldn't be uh, happy. So those things were done. That's about electric cables. You know, I said the cables were, yes, the high tension was too close to the building. So if they didn't pass it through the ground, I wouldn't. And then it happened. I had so much power here in Ho as a district chief executive. Yeah. Yes. And everybody thought I brought some magic. <laughs> Because wherever you were, I saw you. I knew wh wh what, every, what was happening in town. I went everywhere. Those who were fond of, excuse me, defecating in the gutters, before you were aware, I was there. I said, lawyer, you have to collect it. You will collect it. People said I forced them to use their hands. No, 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 I did use, uh, force them to use their bare hands. I said, you could use your handkerchief. You could find some polythene bag around and do it, but I will stand over you and you will collect it. But why do you have to do that? Why do you have to do that? I had to fire on trucks, smuggling timber, 1 a.m. I had to get down with my AK, fire from behind 30 meters, and I got the front tires. I did all this just to bring about sanity. When I came, there was no sanity at all. Who was like a uh, a lawless place, no man's land. People did whatever they, they liked. But then I was close to being a youth. Because now I'm not a youth anymore, according to your definition. Yes, but when I came here, I was close to being a youth. So I had the energy to do everything. And today I'm not surprised that the district assembly which I headed here has come back you know, by resolution, to take me back to the assembly as a member. Yes. As an ex-official member, I'll be among them, I'll deliberate with them, I'll advise them, but I, I don't have voting rights. You see, you people have great opportunities. I had the opportunity of being a young pioneer, Nkrumah's young pioneer, when I was very young. So I don't know whether that molded my being, my behavior. You know, but you have a great opportunity to have a platform like what you have. And you are still young, and you can learn. And you can be truthful to yourselves. All that you need in this world is 
sincerity, truthfulness, good friendship. That's all. Anything short of that, you are not yourself. God sent us to the world you know, to love each other and to work together. So if you don't work for the other's well-being, then you are not productive. I believe with the education you have, you should be able to take up any ventures. Any ventures. These days, I see people doing all kinds of things. I'm not surprised that even university students are using their fees you know, to trade. Yeah, try anything. Try anything, you know, that, that yields something. But please, just make sure that you don't go too far because you need a degree. You need a qualification. Um, when I was invited to this podium, I was expecting to see just a, a few people. I thought it was virtual. Uh -huh. But I've seen a lot of you leaving whatever you were doing to be here. And I don't want to take the sale out of uh, the guest speaker's uh, uh, wings. So I don't want to say much. That's why I'm saying that give me the opportunity to come here to meet you once more and make it a bigger forum so that uh, the other day when the assembly invited me, most of them hadn't met me before, but they heard the work I did here in Ho. So they invited me to address them. It took two hours. And after that, it was a standing ovation. And they agreed that I should come back as a member of the assembly. Um, so I want to meet you, you know, when you have all the time. It's now past four, and uh, I can see some of you, you know, wriggling in uh, your seats. So I will uh, thank you very much for inviting me to your forum. Uh, the youth uh, parliament is a very bright concept, and I have seen the seriousness you've put in this. And uh, I am prepared, you know, to assist you, to be with you all the time, to give you the best of advice, and to help mold you, and to help mold you for the future. I have done how many jobs? I've been a, a teacher, I've been a journalist, I've been a soldier, I've been a gold miner, I've been a DC, I've been everything. And now you can see society, I'm giving some back. When you were mentioning, uh, Mr. When you were mentioning that he hadn't added everything, you also forgot that I was a, a council member of the whole technical university. Uh -huh. So I thank you all for inviting me here and for this uh, great uh, experiences. Uh, my, my good friend, the DC, uh, is here. I'm very happy to see a young person like you uh, in this position. And I hope from now, he and I are going to get closer, you know, to see how, what he can do for his village. If he invites me to that place, I'll come. It was on the way to your place that my car got burnt. <laughs> yes, that was uh, two years ago. Yes, on the, on the hills. My beautiful Ford uh, Explorer got burnt to ashes. Yes. yes. So now when I'm coming, I'll come through here. I won't come through the hills. Yeah. So thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Honorable. I'm so happy to hear from you, and I, will assure, I want to assure you that we'll create more platforms to have you, and as you have availed yourself, we'll make good use of that and learn from you. Uh, we are very young, and we don't take your presence, and all our fathers who have come here, we don't take your presence for a joke. I want to assure you, that is why our people have marshaled 
and the auditorium is full. You don't take your presence for joke. And whenever you are free, you want more opportunity to speak to us. We'll create that. So thank you so much, Honorable. We'll have you. Uh, I'll deliberate with you, and then we'll have you. Whether you want it physical or virtual, we'll have you again to speak to us, for us to learn more. Thank you so much, Honorable George Kofi Mfojo, Captain, former MP for Ho Central, for your commemorative remarks. Honorable members, it is now time for us to have our special guest of honor deliver our keynote address and commemorative speech. But before then, before I read his profile, there is uh, an audio piece for us to hear. So let us hear that, then I'll proceed to read his profile before he moves into the Mega Bajaja Yellow, Mega 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 Honestly, I think I think we'd have to play it when he's coming to the podium again. So pause it. Let me read his profile. Then we'll absorb the song and the honorable himself when he approaches the podium. So honorable members, let me proceed to read his brief profile and then we'll welcome him again with the audio piece. Honorable members, our special guest of honor. Honorable Etonam James Flolu is a Ghanaian entrepreneur and politician. He was appointed as the district chief executive of Afajato South District Assembly by His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Kufuadu, President of the Republic of Ghana since 2019 at age 29. He previously served as the executive director at ELO, ELTO Consult and Relationship Officer at United Bank of Africa from 2014 to 2017. He contested as a parliamentary candidate during the 2020 elections for the Afajato South constituency on the ticket of the National Patriotic Party, a uh, new patriotic party. He read BA honors in political science and information studies from the University of Ghana, Legon. He's an alumnus of St. Augustine's College in Cape Coast. He is a member of the Young Elected Local Official Members of West Africa and President of the Ghanaian Chapter. He is a strong believer in local government and national growth through tourism and technology. Honorable members, shall we have the special guest of honor, Honorable Etonam James Flolu, DCE for our father to stop. Um, deliver the keynote address and commemorative speech on our anniversary. Mega <laughs> 
speaker, our captain, the man from HTU with a big smile, the man of God, the NYA director, all protocol duly observed. In fact, captain, I remember some time back when I was in Ho, I was young by then, when we heard Captain Ufojo was passing, I was trying to pass through the crowd to see Captain. That was way back. Captain hasn't really changed. Aside growing in age, he's almost looking the same. So if he turns his back, he will pass as a youth. Thank you. Um, Honorable Speaker, I think what I really want to speak on is about us being ready. No matter what, once you don't die, you will grow. Once you don't die, you will progress. Once you don't die, opportunities will come. Once you don't die, you will be part of a system. Once you live, you might be a system. But what happens when all those opportunities come at your door? What happens when you are being encountered with certain things? Are you ready? That is a question I want you to ask yourselves. Are you ready? I remember in 2019, somewhere January, I had this book that I used to write certain things in. When I wake up in the morning and I have some dreams or some reflections and I feel that I need to jot it down. I picked up that book and in 2012, I had drawn my, my life, how I was going to live. And I told myself in that book that by 2020, I was going to be a member of parliament. I didn't know how but I just wrote it in the book. I didn't even know the constituency. I didn't even know anything. All I knew was that I was going to be a member of parliament by 2020. And before then, I should have done A, B, C, D. I listed a whole lot of things that I should have done. So 2019, January, I picked up the book. Then I asked myself whether it was possible for me to be a member of parliament by the end of 2020. And when I opened the book, I realized that I was nowhere near being a member of parliament. That was somewhere in January, starting the year. So I normally reflect on my life at the beginning of every year to see how I'm going to go through the year and how the previous year was. Now, so when I answered the question that I was far away from being a member of parliament, I was sad. But I don't know. Something just said, my friend, go on and build your business and forget politics. Not long, somewhere in April, then I got a call that, hey, young man, we want you to come and be the district chief executive of Afaja Tosal. I didn't believe it. But imagine that when that call came, I wasn't ready. Imagine when that Thing that God wanted to do, the man of God will tell you, when destiny wants to take charge of your life, if you are not ready, destiny cannot act. Your destiny might be changed for you because you are not ready. But God being so good, I was ready. 
because in my book I had stated that I was going to be a member of parliament. So with that in mind, I was building myself for some sort of political career. So when the DC came, I was able to take it up. I went in, I got the highest confirmation ever in the history of Afaja Tosaud. One touch, I was confirmed as a district chief executive at the age of 29 years. Yeah. A lot of people didn't know my age. Because if you see me, I'm bald. I don't have hair. So I can pass as somebody who is 40 or 45. So on the day of my, my inauguration into office, when jokingly, the magistrate asked, young man, how old are you? I was reluctant, but I answered, and I answered 29 years. That was when a lot of people got to know my age. Because when you speak to me, by the grace of God, and what I've read, and what I've seen, and what I've been through, I, don't, I didn't sound at that time as somebody who was 29 years. I don't know how 29 years people sound, but I simply didn't sound as 29 years. Because what? I was ready. And being ready is just not writing it in a book that you were going to be this at this age. No. Those of you who have my number, if you see my status every day, I write, Dear God. God is the first factor of everything I do. After you have secured a relationship with God, being ready, one, you need to go to school. Two, you need to read, 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 read. Understand so many things. People tell us that the youth are the future. We are not only the future. We are the present and the future. One of the main reasons why I decided to enter politics is I want to build a future for myself. A future that when I pass Hotel and I see that the road is tired, I would be happy. Because we've watched the older folks build a country for us, build a nation for us, and we, the young ones, are complaining. And we compare the country to the likes of the USA, to Rwanda, and co. Do you want to stay on the fence or out of the fence and come back 10 years later and complain that the leaders of the land didn't do the right thing for you? Is that what you want? Why don't you come in and let's build the country together? Come in and let's build ourselves together. Now, there are so many ways in which you can be part of this process. Not all of us can occupy positions. Not all of us can say good things. Some people are good at saying bad things. And the bad things they say put a lot of us on our toes to do the right thing. So all you need to know is how can you play a role in the development of the country. If yours is just to critique, it's not bad. Do it and do it well. If yours is to propose solutions, do it and do it well. If yours is just to open a beer bar, open a beer bar and open it, and open it well. If yours is to play football, do it and do it well. If yours is to sit in the seat like uh, right honorable speaker Amaglo, sitting and sitting well. You see how he's dressed. Get up and let's see, honorable speaker, respectfully. He is ready. Sometimes you come, I won't be surprised you'll be the speaker of the, the, the parliament of Ghana. Sometimes you come, I won't be surprised this young man will be the majority leader of the parliament of Ghana. Where's the minority leader? He stepped out. I won't be surprised the same. That is only for the captain and his people. They should be in a minority for long. <laughs> they should be in a minority for some time. But that is an aside. <laughs> that is an aside. The youth must be up and doing. Don't let somebody determine what you do. You determine your life. You determine how you place it. You determine what you do. You determine how you walk. You determine where to go. You must be known for something. I came from Accra this morning. And right after speaking, not this morning, I got here around two something, right? Right after speaking to you, I'm going back to Accra. The reason why I came is not because of anything so special about this one. But I know there are so many special people sitting over here. Some people must hear that it is possible to be a district chief executive of 29 years. If I can do it, a lot of you can do it. I remember 
in 2012, I was in the university. I got my first New Patriotic Party card in 2012. I was sleeping when a colleague of mine came. Eto, you know, when everybody hear the Igbe name, they think that you are NDC. Eto, you, anytime I speak to you, you don't sound uh, NDC. Come, 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 come and let's go, come and let's go. Come and let's go. Then I went and I joined. Then we started the journey from 2012. As at that time, I was just doing my work. I was, from there, I was, I was in school. I started working with United Bank for Africa. One of the things that also made me ready was when I was in level 100, I did my first gen December, right? When you go to school in September, your first vacation is in December, where a lot of people want to go back home and show people that, yes, they've gone to university and back. But I used that first December to do my uh, attachment with United Bank for Africa, as at that time. And every vacation, they were accepting me to do attachment with them. So right from school, I was ready to be a banker. And they took me on as national service person. After national service, I was appointed a full staff, and I stayed with them for some time, till I started my own company, Alto Consult, which is into branding and communications. Then from there, the DC job came in. You see how it flowed. I didn't just go to school and do whatever. I decided to tow a path, and I towed it. So when the time came, I was what? Ready for it. Opportunities will come. So many opportunities will come. I was here. And um, we are in somewhere February when the Nalak president called me that, hey, young man, go for a meeting in uh, Cote d'Ivoire. I got there. I became part of a nine-member panel for this young elected local officials in Africa and automatically made me the president of the Ghanaian chapter. What happened? I was ready. I went there and I spoke. After some time in May, I've been invited to Kenya to speak. Because when I got the opportunity to go to Cote d'Ivoire, I spoke, I performed. So what? I was ready and I've been given another opportunity to go and speak, covering the whole Africa. What happened? I was ready. In JSS, I joined the LifeLink to do this model UN thing. I was just going passing through, passing through. In SS, I became SRC president for, uh, SRC uh, leader for my class and part of the year group um, uh, project management team. I was the president of that. I didn't just get up and became ready as a DC. I went through the mail. But one thing you must also know that when the grace of God is upon you, you might not be ready, but you'll be chosen. But not all of us can assess that sort of grace nowadays. Nowadays, the world is so spoiled that even God doesn't pour his grace out like that. You'd have to play your part before he'll pour it. So just assume that the grace of God has been blocked by the skies. Do your part so that eventually when the skies are open and the grace of God pours down on you, you will be ready and opportunities will be given to you. Not all of us can be politicians. Me being a DC at 29 as, as a political actor doesn't mean that it might work for you. Determine what you will need to do. There are successful musicians, there are successful footballers, there are successful teachers, there are successful professors, there are successful captains, successful MPs, Successful DCs, <laughs> successful journalists, successful young men like Captain. So don't let anybody tell you that you have to be this to be great. There are successful painters. There are successful shoemakers. The shoe I'm making right now was made by a friend of mine right here in Ghana. And he's successful. Just make sure that whatever you pick, you do it and do it well. 
I got in here. I met the young man at the entrance. The way he spoke, even the first day I saw him, the way he spoke, I was wondering, what is wrong with this young man? Speaking as if it's some formal engagement. When he sends me messages, it's all formal, formal, formal. Yes, you would want to give me some respect, but, you know, just cool down small. I see that he has a picture in mind of what he wants to be in future, and he's just acting it out. This young man here, he has a future in mind, and he's just acting it out. The lady over there, my friend, Kendall, they all have this picture in mind, and they want to act out. So when the time comes, they will be ready. There is one thing I noticed growing up back in GSS. The people that we saw as people who were living good or people who always were dressing neat and all, somehow, somehow, they managed to be successful. I don't know how that plays out. The people that we saw that they were always, we used to call them Poskaya or something, right? They managed to always get into certain positions. And it's not because of anything, because they always go through the mail. So when they get opportunity, they take it up. One point I need to share with you is that nobody might open the door for you. No. Nobody will open the door for you. Anybody opening the door for you is not opening the door for you. They are opening the door for you to pass through, so you create a bigger door for them to pass through. There's nothing like free lunch here. My coming here is not free. I know what I'm going to gain from it. Captain here knows what he's going to gain from it. Not because we love him so much. Not because we love the reverend so much. This office here giving you the space to do it. Not because they love you so much. They're giving it to you because of something. Have that in mind. There is nothing like free lunch in this world. Oh, I'm telling lies. Now, if you don't find any door that you can open, create one. When I was doing my national service, if you go online, you'll see something called the um, Ghana Customer Experience Summit. I started that thing in Ghana here. Because I went to one of the hotels in Accra. I was trying to buy something. And the waiters were just misbehaving. And then I was like, what is wrong with you? I am paying you money to give me service. You are misbehaving. Then I realized that, no, these people haven't been trained. So what do I do? There's an opportunity for me to create a summit where I bring together all these people. We train them. We make some money from them. And we are good to go. Now, I did the first one, and it was for free. So the doors were open. A lot of people came in. But in my mind, it wasn't for free. They will all pay for it later. So when I did the next one, and it was, I was charging, people came in and they paid for it. I was doing national service. I was thinking whether UBA was going to retain me or not. So what happens? Am I going to go onto the job market setting for jobs? A company that I have served during my university days that I could be having fun, I use that to serve United Bank for Africa. If they don't accept me, what do I do? So when I realized that possibly that door might be shut on me, I said, well, let me create Elto Consult. Then I created Elto Consult. So that if they eventually shut the door on me, I'll just walk in, open my own door, and move in. But God being so good, they didn't shut the door on me. They opened it up for me. And I entered. In 2017, I decided that, OK, enough is enough. I've worked with you guys for some time. Let me also go and create opportunities for people, which I did. I started Elto Consult. We did all the things that we could do, and today I am here. All because what? Yeah. I was ready. Yeah. Whatever you are doing, do it well. Even if you want to be a comedian, be a good comedian. They are rich comedians. The guy that uh, Will Smith slapped, he is richer than you and I combined in this room, but he's a comedian. There's a block layer over here, around here. He's richer than you and I combined. He's richer than me, politician. He's richer than captain. 
ago was a carpenter richer than you and i there are rich doctors they are poor doctors they are rich whatever they are rich presidents they are poor president they are rich former president they are poor former presidents it all depends on how you go about it i don't just want to see yip celebrate one year and then after uh, so many issues and you back out how you go through and make this successful will determine what happens to you and all the people seated here maybe through yip a lot of doors will be open for you people but one thing that normally collapse dreams is when passion overrides reality when he was speaking i heard him say that i fund everything from my pocket or something it is not sustainable it is never sustainable because you are in school you don't have the cash find creative ways in keeping the dream active you can organize programs i don't know how you're going to do it but find a way to make it active because through this people will come out of it and when he's sitting in the chair one day it will be your turn don't envy him when somebody's wearing a jacket don't envy the person it's, it's just a matter of turn when somebody's there and you applaud the person when it gets to your turn the applause will be higher i don't need to come and speak big grammar tell you everything but i'm a very real person i believe that you need to be true to yourself if you have thousand cities if you jump to heaven and come back it's thousand cities if you dig it in a hole and put it in and you go and come back maybe termites might chew it so the money will even lose value but if you invest it you've started this thing find a way if i say invest in find a way to invest in all these people seated here this man is going for src president right who else is standing for position here you can use this medium to place yourself strategically then move on and this is not just a political platform you can find a way infusing in businessmen to come and speak to you so that those of you here who are not born politicians you can also find something to do out of here there's somebody here who wants to start a business get a businessman to come and speak to you there's somebody here who wants to be a good shoemaker a dressmaker or whatever get those people to come and tell you practicalities not people who come and speak grammar and go this man spoke and told you what must be done also for what must be done as for captain when he was mp i was very young i never knew that i'll get the opportunity to sit by him sit on the same lane it's not easy it's not easy even now because of my position there are places where i go with my father and my father will, will be given the back bench i'll be in front that is how it is that is how life is everybody have their time those days when my, i was young and they mentioned my father's name in school i was proud today it's the other way around when they mention my name he's proud it's just a matter of time and don't force it don't force it if you start a business i'm a businessman so i might tweak it a bit to suit business talks if you start a business right and you are small you are small don't act like malcolm when you are just a small blue kiosk in the corner don't act like apple when you have just started some small gadget firm don't buy yourself some heavy car don't buy yourself some heavy shoes don't buy yourself you you make 10,000 Ghana cities profit and you spend 9,000 to look good it happens and people think that once you create a company you are successful no I've created so many companies that have failed. If you go to Registrar General, you see them. They list plenty. My name is on all of them. Most of them failed. But today, I have some that are still working. 
after 2017, if you are looking for a mason and you call me, I'm one. If you are looking for a carpenter and you call me, I'm one. If you are looking for a brands and communications person and you call me, I am one. Because I wanted to do everything in Ghana so that I would make money. But when the reality started dawning on me, <laughs> the company started collapsing one by one, one by one, one by one. And at a point, I was holding my meetings at Fiesta Royal. When you come to me, I'll take you to Fiesta Royal. And I'll spend my capital in hosting meetings at Fiesta Royal. When the reality started dawning on me, the account was going red. Because I wasn't a, a Vodafone. I was acting as Vodafone. Because I consulted for Vodafone once and I got to the office, I saw how they were taking good care of their people. I said, ah, I'll do the same. Small auto consult. Let me also do the same. The money finished. I clear. <laughs> you get the point. Wherever you want to do, whatever you want to do, do it and do it well. But just be ready. I don't want you tomorrow to say that I, the young man, I got an opportunity to build a Ghana and I failed. I might fail because you were not part of me. I might fail because I didn't hear from you. I might fail because you were sitting on the fence. I want us to build a future. And in 10 years to come, we will be proud. Where buses will be working, the trains will be working, inter-regional flights will be working, tourism will be on the rise, money will be on the street. Where even now, as we sit, the next time we come, the air condition will be working. That is the sort of Ghana we need to build. But we cannot do it alone. We need everybody. To be part of it i'll not bore you with a lot of talks because everything i have to say some of them you know them already but just as captain infojo spent his time to come and sit here with you don't let his energy and time be in vain if you don't learn anything from him at all just know that you can play every role and play it well if you you don't learn anything from here if i don't make sense to you just believe that at 29, somebody was able to do it. At 29, you can also do it. You can own big businesses. You can open branches wherever, even before 29 years old. But all I need to tell you before I sit down is if you decide to join a political party, don't look so far. Look at my place so that we can build Ghana together. Yeah. This is not politics. I'm only telling you where you should pass. <laughs> the, the last the last point is that Ghana is on a certain path. Hello? Ghana is on a certain path. Those of you who take the courage to pluck in now would be the managers of the economy sometime to come. The economy is now being set on a certain level. This is the time all the fintechs are coming in, all the technology companies are coming in, the car manufacturing companies are coming in, factories are being opened, tourism is being promoted, and all these people are coming in. This is the time to make a mark and be part of Ghana's story. Don't wait till so many years later before you do it. Those people who were part of the building process of America, are those who are controlling America today. Those people who are part of the building process of um, um, Saudi Arabia, uh, UAE, they are the managers of those economies now. Ten years to come, when you see me, oh, I thought by then I might not be uh, a, a DC. Not that I might not be, I won't be a DC by then. Oh, I thought I met you here. Eh, what are you doing? Oh, I own that big hotel over there, you know. That's, these are the stories we want to hear. Oh, I'm working for the UN. Oh, I'm an MP. Oh, I'm a Speaker of Parliament. Oh, I'm a Majority Leader. Minority Leader. I'm <laughs> ambassador of Russia. It happens. But all I need to tell you again is what? Just be ready. Just be what? Just be what? ready i thank you all for this opportunity 
My good friend, God bless you so much. Everybody seated here, God bless you so much. NYA director, the pastor, the man with a big smile, he's out. Captain, we've learned a lot from you. We are proud of you. As a son of this soul, we are extremely proud of you. And some of us will aspire to do greater things more than you have done. But I'm going to create an opportunity where you and I can be talking often. I want to leave a mark wherever I go. And I promise you people that I'll leave a mark in Afaja Tosau. That the next time you come to Afaja Tosau, you see all these beautiful tourist sites, well promoted, well designed, and to meet international standards. Just a week ago, I welcomed the Indian High Commissioner to my place, uh, the owner of Magdan Company to my place, the regional minister to my place. Two days ago, I welcomed the Korean ambassador to Ghana to my place. All because of what? Tourism. Come in and plug in. You can set up a small tour, tour company, bring in people coming out from outside, let them come and enjoy the place. You take some small money, you are gone. That is money. Or buy some motorbikes, bicycles, come and put there. Let people come and use it. That is money. People come all the way, travel out, and they pay $20,000 per head just to come and pass through all those places and go. You can make that money. Create a small website, Tor Amaglo website, and put there, or IYP website. I'm giving you some business model to keep this thing running. Buy some bicycles and go and put there, and people will come in and patronize it. Get a very small stand, put some um, palm wine, some nuts, some honey under there, let people come in and enjoy. Be part of my story, so I'm also part of your story. Right. Um, I see that you are struggling to put certain things in place. Personally, um, it's not much, but I want to give IYP some thousand Ghana cities to put in their place. I want the thousand Ghana cities to grow to be over ten million dollars. I wish you all the best. God bless you so much. Thank you. Honorable members, I believe we are now loaded with a lot of wisdom, blessings from our guest of honors and a special guest of honor. I'm very happy that you are all here. Honorable members, as a matter of fact, we are approaching the end of today's program. And I would not like us to move to the last part of today's program. Before I even move, thank you very much, our special guest of honor, for giving the keynote address. Everyone, be ready. Be ready. YIP is preparing the grants for you to be ready. So, be ready. Thank you very much. Honor members, we are now at proud to the end of business. Just three items to go on the other paper. Honorable members, I will now proceed to read the closing remarks I've prepared. Honorable members, closing remarks by Speaker Jones and Megashi Biglo. All too soon, our anniversary has come to an end. This program has been successful due to your attendance attendance of all of you great men and women seated here and to all our guests who have come here and then everyone watching us I wish to acknowledge all of you kindly permit me for the records I, I want to do that because this is the starting you know whenever you start you know wherever you reach in the future you want to know the starting so kindly permit me 
to possibly acknowledge everyone here. We are few, but we are much in numbers. Some of you have duplicated, but well, we are still good to go. On our members, can you allow me to acknowledge uh, the following over here? We have Aris Makafui, Anku. She's a youth MP. Let's see the beautiful lady. Yes. Mm -hmm. Harriet Senanu Abube. Abude. Yes, I think you are even you're on TV. You have to bring YIP there. So please, book us. We are coming there. Uh, Innocent Dwamepo is a youth MP. And then we have uh, Michael Adai. He's a member of the Volta Regional Youth Parliament. And then his speaker is uh, Abdi Drisu. Is he around? Oh, okay. They also just stepped out. Our Vincent. Yes, thank you so much for coming. Daniel Evans. Yes, the handsome man there. Then we have um, Harriet Afi Tete, one of my twin sisters. Today, there, she has tried to come. Thank you so much. Uh, we have Atabli Janet. Is she there? We have Michael Kwame. Elom Koshi, yes. Bruce, is it Giuliani? And then, yes, I can see. So you are Bruce, eh? Bruce Lee. Ah, okay. Kendall Mante Elizabeth, our number one arguer. And then, um, let me kindly acknowledge the presence of the father of this particular auditorium is in the person of Pastor Gabriel Seshi. Yeah. Yes. And then his grandfather, who is the Deputy General of Asia of this charismatic empire, Reverend Roger Elam Titriku. Yeah. Yes. Honorable members, I'll proceed with my closing remarks. I wish to also acknowledge all members who supported us during the pilot session. Um, before I move, Doc, thank you so much for coming. MP invited you. Thank you so much for coming as well. Um, I wish to also acknowledge all who supported us during our pilot session. Um, as part of this, we should actually share a story about how we started. Today, I'll tell you all. As a matter of fact, exactly one year ago, the co-founders are here. I wanted to start this a long while ago, even when I came to school, that was in 2016, getting to the end. It was there. Then exactly one year ago, around this time, afternoon, then I just had the hint. Whether it was a hint from God, I do not know. It was like, Jones, it's time to start. I quickly called Amano and then Honorable Raymond. And then we did something, something. Look at where we are. We are here. Be ready. We were preparing ourselves a long while ago. And when it was time, we started. So now members, be ready. So at the start, we had few young men. As a matter of fact, I will not read, but it is all because of the record. Raymond Elikemadbu, Felix Huape Adiche, Emmanuel Hyadike, Samuel Saki, David Amanona, Elijah Kanladi, Samuel Kisi Ampedu, Evans Hood at Bagba, Erasmus, Hubert, Selom, Bright Vixen, Dola Glaston, Obed Glito, Tusa, Emmanuel Odo, Selassie Kokroko. Selassie Kokroko was our clerk during the pilot session. We had Eunice Boateng, Millicent Motpo, and Christabel Sefako. They were all part of the first sitting that we held. It was very interesting because there was no item 13. In fact, let me give that, let me give that, it's very, very important. Your human anatomy, if I'm right. So, honorable members, right from here, the arrangement is that we'll take some pictures on the stage and then your refreshment will be given to you. So, please take note of that. On that note, I would like to put it on record that this house started as HTU Youth Parliament before we changed our name. And now we are Youth Impact Parliament. It has come to stay. I want to use this opportunity to extend my sincerest appreciation to our guests of honors and special guests seated here today. Honorable Etonam James Flulu, 
Thank you so much for coming to impact us. And thank you so much for your donation as well. Hopefully, we'll multiply that. Honorable members, let's give a hear here to that. Yeah. Honorable members, it is not only about cash. Honorable George Kofi Mfoju, former MP for Whole Central, thank you so much for coming to impact us. There is more knowledge in you that you have given us the opportunity for us to harness. I want to assure you once again that we'll find a platform we deliberate with you back door when next we would have you for you to come and teach us. Wisdom, knowledge is priceless. So we'll have you once again. Reverend Roger Elam Tuchuku, thank you so much for giving us the auditorium and then the pastor for this place as well. Mr. Simon Avoga, he's also my HOD. Thank you for coming around. And then Mr. Charles K. Gumen, the NYA director. Thank you so much for helping us to be legally recognized. As a matter of fact, we have solved our problem. Because I was thinking, we are coming to hold anniversary and then we are not even legally recognized. Some policemen would just come and actually say, stop. So thank you so much for giving us the insight. And then now we are legally recognized. Very soon we'll also go and then we'll also be part of um, on the documents of Registrar General's Department, yes. I would like to humbly acknowledge the unprecedented aid from HTUSRC. HTUSRC has freely supported this organization by giving out HSRCGC Auditorium for all our sittings. Virtually, we had all our physical sittings at HUSRCGCR. And even some printings. We did some printings over there. I'd like to acknowledge their leaders, some of their leaders during the time. Uh, Mr. Emmanuel Mati, Mr. Angel Fancy, and then the current president, Mr. Samuel Kisiampedu. Thank you so much for the support. I'd like to thank the following personalities for their support in terms of perusal of documents, directions, and then all those to see all the things that you are seeing over here. We needed grooming. And I'd like to acknowledge them. My dad, Mr. Simon Omega Shibiglo. My mom as well, Monica Omega Shibiglo. Yes, if you want to ask me what they have done, he read through all these pamphlets you are seeing to ensure that everything is up to place. And then this, also courtesy from my mom. Thank you so much. Mr. Joshua Omega Shibiglo, my big brother. Mr. Simon K.M. Avoga, from all the advices that he gave. Ms. Benedita Jekesh is at the back, going through with all the welfare issues. Thank you so much. Mr. Dola Glaston, for all the posters he has done. I had to sit on him late night for him to design the poster. Thank you so much. And then all others that I might not be able to talk about. Most of you hyped the program, invited your colleagues. Thank you so much. You are all there. And I want to thank you for all that you have done. I must state that the value proposition of Youth Impact Parliament is the preservation and accessibility of its records. We are, we are currently streaming our seating. All the seatings that we have held have been uploaded on YouTube and Facebook, and all the seminars that we have held have all been duly uh, uploaded over there. I'm not sure we have any youth parliament in Ghana that they have all their records set. I think you should give a hear here to that. Yay! One of our guest speakers on our virtual leadership seminar stated that we are the most vibrant youth in part parliament. Director, is it true? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, now our members, we are not just part of any parliament, but we are part of youth impact parliament. So, congratulations to you as well. Our social media handles are all there Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and then um, Instagram, go and then see what we do. Check us out, and then, if possible, recommend us. So, honorable members, for the attention of the house, as I said, we are all on all those youth impact parliaments, you know, all those social media platforms. Um, honorable members, it's important, very soon the first parliament will be dissolved. So it's important that I acknowledge the officers of the first parliament. Because right after this, we only have one virtual leadership seminar and one sitting before 
the first parliament to be dissolved. And then the second parliament will be inaugurated to continue the work. So kindly permit me to acknowledge um, the key officers of the first parliament. The speaker is Don Samiga Suviglo. The clerk is Hilary Ofusuansa, the beautiful lady there. We also have a deputy clerk publicity, Delphia Bukhari. Deputy clerk finance, All Nice Adams. Deputy clerk operations, Millicent Moto Kwashi. Yes. Our marshal, he's, he's, he's at the background working on things for us. Mr. Enoch Nyajo. And then he has two deputies, Paul Pontu and then Ben Katiu. They are also over there. My media men, thank you so much for the sacrifices. You are doing so well. And then the MPs, the ones holding position. The first deputy speaker, Felix Hwate Adiche, robed over there. Second deputy speaker, Emmanuel Hyandeke. Emmanuel, I thought you said you had exams today. Or oh, class, you have skipped it. Thank you so much. For the love of the parliament, not council. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Our majority leader, uh, Mr. Amano David Nam, Minority Leader Erasmus Ahianu Salam Agbavo, Deputy Majority Leader Hubert Agbahode, Deputy Minority Leader Wanda Nicodemus Jamesi, Majority Chief Whip. They are all there. Godwin Yaokwashi, Minority Chief Whip. Gidi Evans, First Deputy Majority Whip. Godson Agbem uh, Pilido is in a green suit over there. First Deputy Minority Chief Whip, Priscilla Afriye Adai, Second Deputy Majority Chief Whip, and then Agasta Gape, Second Deputy Minority Chief Whip. Oh, Alex Bine, Felix Ansa, I've missed your names, so don't worry, I'll get to you. So, um, some of these officers are chairpersons and committees, but I'll skip the ones that I've already called. Um, so, Vixen Selom is the ranking member for the Education Committee of this parliament. Then we have Perfect Amuji Deku and then Courage Belly. They are chairperson and ranking members of Petitions Committee. Then we have Edmond Kekeli Dokuma. He is the ranking member of Privileges Committee. He's at the back. We have Aligabas Osman. He's the chairperson of our Publicity Committee. Aligabas. Yes. We have Dollar Glaston, who is the ranking member. We have um, Felix Ansa, is the chairperson of our special budget committee. And then Bine Teofilos is the ranking member. Thank you all for coming. And then our welfare chair, Josephine Adela, and then all of you. Thank you so much for coming. Honorable members, thank you so much. And as this program is virtually coming to an end, we are grateful for all the sacrifices. Honorable members, on this note, we'll move to item four on the other paper, vote of thanks. I humbly invite item 14 on the other paper. I humbly invite the clerk of this house, Ms. Hilary of Usuansa, to deliver the vote of thanks to yeah. this gathering. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I am delighted to be given this opportunity to perform this tax. I would like to firstly and most importantly thank the Almighty God for giving us life and time to be here together to celebrate this anniversary. I want to convey the sincerest gratitude to the House, our special guest of honor, the guest of honors for gracing our occasion. God bless you all. I wish to thank all participants and members for coming to celebrate with us. I would like to thank the organizers for the setting, the founders and the role players for making this program a success. Mr. Speaker, God bless you and your team as well. Long live Youth Impact Parliament. Long live Ghana. Thank you. Honorable members, we are gradually approaching to the end of today's sitting. We are now on item 15, adjournment to our seventh sitting. Honorable members, 
I humbly call on the majority leader to move the motion for adjournment. Uh, seventh sitting, I would like to use this opportunity to, to thank all and sundry that have made this particular gathering a success, most especially to uh, our guests that have graced this particular occasion. The speaker, in the absence of any further deliberation, I, Amanda David, now majority leader, per your own time, move for the House to adjourn to our seventh sitting. Thank you very much. I will now call on. The acting minority leader, Kendall Elizabeth Mante, to second the motion for adjournment. Mr. Speaker, in the House, without further deliberations, additions, and subtractions, I stand on all protocols observed to move for the, to second the motion that the majority leader has already done. Thank you. Honorable members, in accordance to convention and practice, when a motion is moved, we ought to reach a determination. Accordingly, I now put the question to the House. The question is that this House accordingly adjourns to its seventh sitting, yet to be, yet to be determined. Honorable members, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Not in favor, say nay. Nay. Honorable members, the eyes have it. The motion carries. Therefore, this house stands adjourned. Yay. Yay. Please, we'll be taking pictures. Okay, so this is going to be the other photography. We will have Mr. Speaker with a guest of honor. Uh, yes, with all the guests of 